Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where I'm gonna be sharing with you my whole beard hair transplant journey from start to finish to seven days and 14 days post-operation. Before I start with the video, however, make sure you like it right now and make sure you subscribe. Smash that subscribe button at this very moment right now because there are gonna be some key videos coming from me during the next couple of weeks on topics of beard transplants. What makes a beard transplant natural? Five things you need to understand before you undergo a beard transplant. Things that can go wrong during beard transplant. The same way you can find a bad hair transplant transplant doctor and end up with a unnatural looking hair transplant result. These same pitfalls are waiting for guys when they're choosing a beard transplant doctor. So make sure you smash that subscribe button because I'm going to be informing you guys uh, about how to do this the proper way. With that being said, let's start with the video. And as always, this video has been brought to you by Go Fiber, which are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning, any patchy areas on your scalp. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out, see if you like them. Guys, welcome back to the channel, good to see you everybody and one important thing before I even start showing you my consultation and all the steps I went through with my beard, if you are somebody who is considering a beard transplant right now and you have never even tried things like minoxidil, okay, things like minoxidil with derma rolling on your beard, for promoting uh, beard growth, for thickening your beard. You have not tried uh, castor oil, cold pressed castor oil, you should do so. Because chances are you can pretty inexpensively grow your beard, thicken your beard. Just give it six to 12 months and you will see what's possible. Now, I have tried that when I was like 22. That was the first time when I was noticing some beard growth. It was very patchy. It was really annoying. I'm sure you know it. And I was like waiting for that beard to get thicker when I was like 22. That's how my beard looked like when I was like 23, uh, then I was 24. It started thickening a little bit, but these areas were really, really poor, really patchy looking. Also my mustache was almost non-existent until like 24, 25. And I noticed when I was like 28, 29, the beard growth started to stagnate despite me using additional boosters like minoxidil and castor oil. So. This was the time when I realized that getting a beard transplant wouldn't be a bad idea to get everything, uh, you know, filled in better and make the whole mustache, the reconnection with the beard, with the beard lines here, make it look more wholesome. That's why I decided to get a beard transplant. But I wanted you to know that there are also some other options, inexpensive options you can do and use uh, to promote better beard growth before you even consider beard transplant, okay? And now let's start with a consultation at HLC Hair Transplant Clinic and Beard Transplant Clinic, which I have chosen for my beard transplant uh, because uh, not only because of their great reputation, great hair transplant results, but also beard transplant results, but more about these things in another video uh, where I'm gonna be sharing with you what's important to know uh, and look for when researching a good uh, doctor for your beard transplant. Transplant. I cannot do it in this video because then it will be very long and many of you will be dropping off and that's something we don't want. So more on that in another video, why I chose the clinic that I chose, but now let's start with the consultation. <laughs> <laughs> well, but first of all, I wanted to add more density here and kind of homogenize these sides of the mustache. But we will not change the area, right? Mm -hmm. You like exactly. it? Just exactly. More density. Just more density. The lines uh, are different now, which you like better. Those Down. I like this one better. Oh. Yeah, I want to reconnect uh, the moustache with the beard hair, with the facial hair on the left and right and side. And also fill in here? Uh, fill in here a little bit, yeah, to kind of homogenize this, kind of, so it's not like super difference in density, but it can be denser than this, of course, if possible, but obviously just add more because there are some very like less pigmented hairs here growing and I usually need to color the beard to make it look like they look thicker than they actually are. Mm. Not just filling, you don't have any hair here. Mm. Small difference. 
not too much crop. If you will uh, harvest the whole area mm -hmm. with the less density, uh, then uh, it will be okay. Maybe so you want to like thin it out yeah. everywhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, use just beer hair because it's a visible area. Uh, we have to move the similar hair. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. That's only so one we have on your chin. Okay, so the doctor drew the beard line and pretty much agreed on like 80% of it and then we kind of tweaked this part a little bit to make it more symmetrical with this. And here, I really like how he drew these two ones. And then we try to do this one even more symmetrical with this one because here I have less, it's more patchy than here. So, but we'll now count the, the exact you know, surface and we'll see uh, how many uh, beard grafts will be extracted totally from this area. Okay. The area uh, looks 23 square centimeter. I told you uh, our goal is uh, to find the 30 density. We need then 4,460 uh, butva. Here, we need 3, 4, 5. With moustache, uh, we need uh, uh, 10 centimeter. square centimeter. We need 500 mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 350 uh, for left and right and 150 uh, for the uh, moustache. Mm -hmm. So as you have already seen, uh, we will, or I will have 350 beard grafts transplanted on this area and this area, and 150 more for the moustache. Overall, 500 grafts total. Okay, so that's the plan, and yeah, so far so good. All right, guys, here you can see my doctor and his two assistants working on the beard graft extraction from this area. Uh, the whole extraction took about one hour, one hour, 15 minutes for 500 beard grafts to be extracted. Here you can see how the doctor is using manual punch for extracting these beard uh, follicles. And to be honest, I haven't even felt the local anesthetic when they injected it to numb this area, I, I haven't even felt almost no pain. It was so comfortable and I was asleep during the whole extraction, okay? So that was really, really comfortable and um, it definitely hurt less than graft extraction from the donor, from the occipital region when you are undergoing a hair transplant. I can tell that for sure. So here you can see how uh, after the doctor has done several uh, extractions his assistants will start picking start collecting these beard grafts and they will be put into a storing solution uh, some of you guys may ask whether there are singles doubles and triple grafts as it is the case with uh, the follicles uh, on your head it's not as frequent to have many doubles and triple beard grafts most of them are just single grafts occasionally two beard grafts and i myself also had three or four double uh, beard follicles but the rest were singles obviously these are much more thicker much more robust looking singles compared to the singles which are coming from your uh, head hair on your head okay after the extraction phase uh, was over I went to the consultation room again and looked <clears throat> at my beard line in a mirror just to make sure that the lines and everything are symmetrical and they're looking the way I want them to be okay I think we redrew this left portion of the mustache we made it a little bit lower I don't remember correctly right now but uh, after this uh, I was pretty happy how the design ended up and I was ready for the implantation phase which took about two hours two hours and 15 minutes I believe as you can see here, HLC likes to utilize the stick and place method. They're pretty much doing it with their hair transplants as well. It means that the opening uh, or the incision will be done and after that, immediately the graft will be placed inside, okay? It's not gonna be like the usual FUE hair transplant where, where hundreds and thousands of incisions are being uh, created first and then the implantation will occur. No, in this case, it's happening simultaneously. And as you see here, I didn't have to shave my beard because uh, my doctor told me that he actually prefers to transplant a beard 
hair uh, on a uh, non-shaven beard especially if patients have some uh, beard to begin with already it's uh, better for the doctor to see how that beard kind of naturally grows when it's a little bit longer and that kind of helps him to transplant the new beard fo follicles in a more natural way he can see the density better if the beard hair is longer so he kind of sees the gaps better the patches better it's been exactly 24 hours since my my little beard transplant exactly 24 hours uh, they ended up extracting 503 grafts from uh, underneath the chin okay it's actually healing very well it didn't hurt at all when they were extracting these grafts so that's really good I already applied the body lotion uh, B pantanal uh, which the clinic gave me and I already put one really thick layer uh, I just can share with you how I do that. Pretty much spread it all over your donor area. Okay, like that. Yesterday I was advised not to use it, but today I started using it. Today I also started applying uh, saline spray. That's the usual saline that you use on the recipient area after your hair transplant. So that's the saline. And you pretty much just spray it on these, on the recipient area, yeah, recipient area. Uh, Pretty much it's gonna drip you should do it ideally in the bathroom when it kind of drops into the sink and then you can kind of pat it with um, ideally like a very soft towel so you don't really touch these grafts so much the doctor told me that they should be safe after let's say three days 72 hours similar to uh, a uh, sorry scalp hair if it's gonna be implanted on the recipient area it's usually three to four days I started taking antibiotics uh, starting yesterday night. That was the first pill I took in the morning. I also took antibiotics. I'm also taking these pills, which are like for 30 days. They're meant to be taken 30 days from the day number one. These are for better, uh, uh, better circulation. Uh, so that's what I'm taking. I have never used any painkillers after the operation. I didn't have to. I got like 12 pills, but I, I, I don't think I'm gonna be needing any of them. As far as healing as you see everything is going well I'm gonna be applying this selling spray very frequently from now on so the healing and the scabs can fall out very fast from now on as far as the face mask that was one interesting thing that I was kind of I was afraid too because I, I thought I'm gonna damage my graft so the doctors really told me to kind of just very put it on very carefully like that and also maybe you know uh, just the surgical mask you don't want to be use this n95 mask because these are very tight you need a very loose mask and even if your grass will touch the mask a little bit it's gonna be fine so that will be it as far as sleeping you know as always elevated position you cannot like move to the side especially if you got the beard transplant on your cheeks uh, you gotta be careful for the first three four days I think that was pretty much it to sum it up uh, I'm gonna give you another update after a week from now so you can see how how much of a difference in healing in redness it will make and yeah see you there okay this is the footage from seven days after the operation and here you can see already how the transplanted beard follicles uh, kind of homogenize with the beard hair which was existing I still have some scabs uh, as I'm showing you on both uh, sides now here I also thought that I'm recording voice but I was just recording the video there was a little fail from my side uh, but anyways so you can also see here that my neck is healing very well and by this time I was still applying the saline spray on my beard grafts and the lotion on my neck all right guys this can be considered two weeks after my beard transplant and you can see how how quickly that donor area healed really just slight redness which you can probably see here and there but uh, nothing i can touch it i can scratch it and it feels like completely normal already let me know in the comments below what you think about this result so far i'm gonna keep you updated in case anything happens comment below what type of updates would you like to see on this channel as far as my beard transplantation and that was it for this video really 
If you are new, new to the channel, you are interested in these topics, how to combat your hair loss, what are the things that you should do properly to manage your hair loss, uh, hair transplants, how to research properly, how to get the hair transplant the right way, how to get the beard transplant the proper way, make sure you check out my website mattdominance.com, make sure you visit my free Facebook group Hair Transplant Experiences with over 2,600 members in the group and you can also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me where I can help you out directly with these things, be it uh, designing a proper hair loss management protocol, assisting you throughout your hair transplant research and stuff like that. Okay, so make sure you uh, make use of that. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. See you next time.